Hi everyone and good morning, afternoon or evening wherever you're at. Um, my name is Afaf. If you were here with me yesterday, then you would know that we're on day two of our um, series of webinars where we will be covering different parts of the syllabus through answering techniques and question debriefs as well. Some of you were asking for my contact details yesterday. So on the screen right now, I've put in my email address. Um, I'll try and respond to your emails um, if you have any technical queries. So that's the email address for you to use to get in touch with me. Um, this is the plan that I shared with you all yesterday. So we covered day one, which was section A, B and C of the syllabus. Remember, these are very easy topics to study. There's some level of learning involved, particularly in the code of ethics, but they're slightly difficult to get marks in unless you're comfortable with the answering techniques. So the, I, I think the thing that should have learned yesterday or from yesterday's question is we need to read the question very, very carefully. We have to make sure we reach, uh, read each line, each paragraph carefully and try and link it to the knowledge that we have. It's always a good idea to, in your um, scratch paper or maybe in a planning part on your um, response area, just jot down the key areas. So you know regulatory environment includes laws, regulations, money laundering, and then jot down the key areas so that when you're answering these questions, you would know that these are the points that I could potentially be linking my, linking my answer to. Today, we're going to be covering the 25 marks in section A. So this is something I discussed yesterday as well. In question number one, um, you're going to be tested on a minimum of 25 marks from audit risk. It could be audit risk, it could be business risk, it could be a mix of both as well. The question that we're doing today covers business risk, risk as well as audit risk. I will also be talking about the case study reading approach and I will also tell you the professional marks. So question number one is a 50 mark case study, 46 are the technical, technical marks, and then you have four professional marks as well. So keeping all of this in mind, I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, I, I, I will um, put up a few syllabus areas that I need to use as a checklist, and then I'll go directly to your answering techniques as well. Um, with audit planning, there's not a technical, there's not a lot of new technical knowledge that you should be aware of. Remember, audit strategy includes understanding the client, its business environment, its reporting framework, internal control. This includes evaluating audit risk, setting preliminary materiality, and deciding scope, timing, and direction. Once your strategy or overall approach has been made, you then make the audit plan in which you actually identify in detail what procedures are going to be conducted. As far as the AAA exam is concerned, you are not very likely to see a lot of discussion-based areas on this topic. However, and this is the very important part, please understand ISA 315 has been revised to include new, term, uh, to include new terms. Now, this is not a current issue. So there's a very nice technical article on the ACC Global website, but it's not a current issue. It's actually a revision to an auditing standard because it's a bit more detailed than normal and it's obviously slightly on the complicated side. What I've done is in your handout section for today, you can see a document which is called Tech Article Summary for Students. So this is a summary that I made for my students at SCANS and we went through this in detail. This sort of summarizes in easy terms what the changes are. So if we have time towards the end of the session today, I'll highlight the changes that are there so that when you're preparing for this, you know exactly what they are. I don't think she'll actually ask you what the changes are, but if she's in a good mood and she wants to give you easy marks, she might expect you to have a discussion regarding, for example, one of you spoke about risk prioritizing yesterday. So please make sure you use the technical article summary if you find the actual technical article a bit on the difficult side. 
Um, I've, I did put up my email address a second ago. It's afafnoor at outlook.com. Uh, once you have the recording, you should be able to see it again as well. Right, guys. So as far as your exam is concerned, again, this is something your examiner has specified in Section A, which is the case study is going to be set primarily at the planning stage of audit. And you can expect to see a good 25 mark requirement related to risk. I'm going to do this one by one. We're going to start off with the first type of requirement, which is business risk. As a tutor, I feel this is the easiest part to get marks in, but my students don't agree primarily because they struggle in explaining the business risk. So let's start off with what do we have to write when you're asked to evaluate business risks faced by the client? I'm going to scroll down. You just give me a second. Right, guys. So bear with me for a minute. This is what you're looking at. So rule number one for business risk, it is normally two marks per well explained risk. This is one of the rare topics in AAA where you get two marks per risk. So for example, if it says evaluate business risks for 10 marks, you know that you will need to identify and explain five risks properly. It makes it easier for me to manage my time. It makes it much easier for me to write appropriate answers as well. In order to get these two marks, you have to follow these two steps. Start by identifying the risk from the scenario. So if you simply write, this would cause cash flow problems, the marker would say, this is a zero because I have no idea what you're talking about. So you need to specify that, for example, the client is facing a lawsuit. If it loses, this is going to lead to an outflow of money because you'll have to pay the uh, damages um, to the uh, person who's filed the lawsuit. Plus, this could have an impact on my reputation as well. So please make sure you start by using words from the scenario and then explain the problem this can cause for the management in the future. So in order to answer business risk, you have to put yourself in the management's shoes. The problem could be financial. This is not financial statements. That's completely different. Financial literally means money wise. So this could potentially lead to more outflow of money or less inflow of money. This could reach to operational issues. For example, it could affect quality. It could cause delays, etc. It could reach to uh, sorry, lead to compliance issues. So based on the scenario, if there's a chance that you've breached a law regulation or a best practice guideline, for example, this could mean your effect on reputation. It could mean fines, which is again outflow of money, or it could have rep reputational consequences as well. So normally, every single problem that you talk about would, would lead to one of these four problems. I would only get these two marks if I explain them properly. So I'm just going to say this out regarding the lawsuit. One student has written, the client is facing a lawsuit. The risk is they might have to pay damages. That is half a mark. That is literally you just basically explaining at a very basic level that the problem that they might face is payment of dam damages. Now, how do I convert this into two marks? Tell me what issue the damages would cause. So step number one, payment of da damages is a straight outflow of money. This is going to have an impact on my cash and liquidity, one mark. So another student has written damages, which could, which could lead to impact uh, an impact on cash, one mark. 
plus it could have an adverse effect on the company's reputation as well that's now two marks so ideally a well explained risk needs to explain the problem that the management might face in detail i'm going to um, talk about a few examples first two i'll explain the remaining two i want you to have a go at this so very frequently tested i've been told by my students in published questions as well um this is the competitive industry now most of the students would write the risk is it's a competitive industry full stop the marker is going to say thank you so much i've read the question here is your big fat zero so you have to make sure you do not simply copy paste what's written in the scenario you have to explain the problem so this is a competitive industry in order to survive the client might need to cut prices which would obviously lead to decreased inflows so you'll have to potentially sell at lower margins as well you might need to continuously invest in new technology again that would mean a lot of outflows for me as well so you have to explain the problems or the risks that the management might face because of a competitive industry that's the only way you'll get two out of two so i read the information i did some calculations right so i've calculated the gp margin i've calculated the operating profit margin and it's all worsening calculation marks aside you'll have to you can't simply write the gp and operating profit margins are going down the markers are going to say thank you well done for knowing basic maths but i'm not giving you any marks for that you will have to tell me that worsening profitability ratio actually means in the future i'm going to be dealing with liquidity and cash flow issues as well so if your profits are going down subsequently eventually you're going to face liquidity problems as well your cash is going to be affected etc etc similarly if your liquidity ratios are worsening you have to explain the problem you're going to have issues paying off your monthly expenses so please explain the problem that these issues could cause for the management remember i've taken examples which are being frequently tested i've had feedback from my students um even in questions that are not being published so they come and tell me oh you know apart you mentioned that that came up as well i'm now going to open the question box and i want you to think of the problems that the management might face due to part c so i'm on example c right now and remember my star means very frequently tested so one way or the other she's giving some indication in the scenario so she would say things like they do not have an audit committee or their board is not balanced so she would be writing one thing or the other and she would expect you to tell me what the uh, business risks are go on then have a go at this afan absolutely business risk actually means future consequences in a bad way so you your entire focus has to be on what can go wrong for the management in the future so that's exactly what you have to do okay i've had one answer um i think it's mukhtar ashraf he he said poor decision making i'll give you about half a mark for that um doa i suppose this is not a listed company i completely agree with, with you if this were a listed company you would say okay compliance issues let's assume it's not so for a private company if they do not have if they're not following best practice guidelines they do not have an audit committee or their audit committee is headed by the finance director the board is not balanced anything at all what problems could potentially be faced by the management salva half a mark abdullah is the only one who's given me the right answer no marks for independence issues um hamayel that's very well done lack of accountability leading to more chances of fraud 
Doha, very well done. Weak control environment leading to fraud and error. Um, Mukhtar, I, I don't know. I, I'm not really sure if I'll give you marks for that, but I'll give you about half a mark for that explanation as well. I'm, Yolanda, I'm reading your answer. Okay, Yolanda, your entire answer is wrong because you've given me the answer to audit risk, not to business risk. Remember, while I'm answering the questions for business risk, I have to do this entirely from the management's point of view. So every single time, weak corporate governance is indicative of weak controls, which ultimately means higher chances of fraud and error in the organization and maybe poor decision making as well. Uh, some of you have very aptly used words like poor accountability and I, I don't want to see the word independence unless you explain what the problem is. Um, Mukhtar, it's you can't just jump to the conclusion that they won't get the loan unless they've specified that they've applied for the loan. So every single time, all right, Nithi, I'm reading your answer. Um, hang on, you've written ineffective controls. Oh, that's Adil's answer. And Adil, you're spot on. That's perfect. Uh, Janet, I'll give you marks for poor operations at each level of management. I'll give you one mark for that. Nithya, I'll give you one mark for that as well. Very well done. So this is going to affect operations. This is going to lead to poor decision making. Before all of this explanation, I need to see the word weak internal control. Remember, internal control is not just over financial reporting. Internal control is very important for me internally within the organization to run my system smoothly as well. All right, one last one for business risk. So you're auditing a group and the parent company has given a guarantee for a loan to a component. So a component could be a joint venture, it could be an associate, it could be a subsidiary as well. What is the business risk? I've had my students coming to me and saying that if our, this was this came up, we couldn't think of the business risk. So come on then, let's see if you can come up with the answer. What are your concerns as the management? If this were your company, what are you worried about? Think, think, think. So you're the parent company. You've guaranteed a loan for a subsidiary or an associate. What could go wrong regarding this guarantee? I'll give you a hint. If the component cannot pay, Yolanda, very well done. Janet, absolutely not. A lot of students would end up writing things like loss of reputation. There is no link to that at all. Yolanda's answer is absolutely correct. If the component is unable to repay its loan, the parent company would have to pay it, which is basically cash outflow. So in case the component defaults, we are majorly concerned about the um, cash outflow. Um, I, Abdullah, I won't really jump at going concerned directly because I haven't given you any figures at all. But yes, I like the way Adil has worded this, a strain on the parents' cash flows. You have absolutely, uns, absolutely. So a strain on the cash flows is exactly what the, the wording that would um, lead to the answer. Absolutely, O'Brien. So outflow because of the, uh, because the uh, parent company might need to pay the cash as well. Afan, spot on. So very well done. I'm going to minimize the question and answer box for a second. Um, so if I go back, if I'm asked to evaluate business risk, rule number one, remember it will be two marks per risk. So remember 
for a 10 mark requirement this means i have to find five rip and have to complete my answer in 15 minutes remember the rule is 1.5 minutes per mark then comes the part which is going to be there in every single attempt which is audit risk please remember audit risk covers two parts it covers risk of material misstatement in financial statements and it covers detection risk as well so if she asks for rom only you get no marks for talking about mistakes the auditors can make but if it's audit risk then you can talk about under overstatement in financial statements along with detection risk as well you have to be very careful about the answering format because you can actually get quite a few marks for this you start off by explaining which topic you're talking about you could choose this as a heading so for example in my example that you're going to answer in just a second my heading would be loan guarantee you get no marks for this, but this is a very important element for me to tell the marker which area I'm going to be talking about. You are first of all going to calculate and conclude on materiality if possible. So for about four risks in question number one, you would have materiality marks. So let's jot this down over here. For four risks in question number one, you would have these materiality marks please make sure you have your calculation and conclusion correct so if you simply write this is seven percent of total assets full stop that's a zero if you simply write it's material that's a zero you have to explain the exact materiality calculation so let's start filling this format out the loan guarantee was given by the parent to a component so um i think this just went for seven million so you would write this guarantee is seven percent of total assets and therefore it is material remember the guidelines are one percent of total assets five percent of pvt and half percent of revenue so for four of the risk i get my materiality mark then i'm going to talk about accounting treatment that should have been followed and unfortunately this is dependent on your accounting knowledge entirely now for a loan guarantee which accounting standard comes to your mind I'm going to open up the question and answer box again yolanda i hope you haven't written um loss of customers for loan guarantee right that's not going to happen oh my god i'm getting all wrong answers yeah why don't you just start naming every answer what what ifrs 9 are you talking about richard is the only one who's given me the right answer by the way every single other answer is incorrect natasha and richard very well done guys please 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 jolanda mukhtar godfrey amir it's not my loan it is not my loan oh yolanda that's correct then please understand and i hope you don't make this mistake in the actual exam you cannot have a double entry of a liability of the loan you've just given a guarantee in case it is probable that the component is going to default a provision if it's possible then a contingent liability disclosure so most of you would end up writing ifrs 9 etc um that would be completely wrong this is not my liability so you would write according to the reporting framework if there's a probable outflow then a provision would need to be booked if it's a possible outflow then a contingent liability disclosure would need to be given so i get one mark for explaining the accounting treatment that should have been followed stay with me on this one then you have to explain the risk the risk is that this has not been followed in other words the risk is that provision 
not uh, booked or a contingent liability disclosure is missing and then explain the financial statement impact so risk and then the financial statement impact so for provision your liability plus expense is going to be understated or it is a disclosure which is going to be inadequate or missing for each correct impact you get half a mark so this basically means including the materiality mark you can get around three and a half marks for each each well explained answer please understand if you ask me a faf for a 24 mark question how many risks do i have to write i can't give you that answer it depends on whether you're following the format or not for four of the risks you'd have the materiality mark as well but for the others it is pretty much two two and a half marks depending on how you write it i've typed up a question and an answer to exactly go through um, how this works so in the question it says the client purchased a license for 45 million they can use it for five years total assets of the client are 550 million and the client potentially being an unqualified accountant has recorded this in marketing expense and no other entry has been done this is from the past exams now as a triple a student the minute i read this i should identify this is not a marketing expense this needs to be recorded as an asset let's get our mark my first easy mark is 45 million is 8% of total assets, therefore it is material. If I don't see both the words, you'll get a zero. According to the reporting framework, you don't have to write the standard number. Simply write purchased license licenses need to be recorded as intangible assets and amortized over their useful life. The risk is this has been incorrectly recorded as a marketing expense and because of that intangible assets are understated marketing expenses are overstated so if i mark this for you your materiality your accounting treatment the risk is the above accounting treatment has not been followed and half a mark for each correct impact i'm not done yet as accountants you should know your is 38 and remember once i've made this my asset i need to amortize it so i get more marks for talking about the next stage once it is recorded as an intangible asset you can calculate the amortization for me you can comment on amortization's materiality but you only get one mark for either the asset or the amortization you need to explain that asset has to be amortized over its useful life risk is that amortization is not recorded therefore assets are overstated expenses are understated if this is not done this is the financial statement impact so when you ask me how many risks do i have to find for 20 mark question my answer would always be i have no idea it depends totally on whether you can follow the format that you see on the screen right now afan because that's the way i word it you can you don't have if you don't want to write the risk the risk is this basically means the problem instead of writing risk you can write the problem I mean, not at all. This is going to be, if you have mentioned this over here, then you won't get a separate mark for that. The risk amortization has not been recorded. This is the marking over here. It depends on whether you explained this treatment with this one or not. You won't be marked twice for this. So for the accounting treatment, you'd normally get a combined mark. If you say number one, it should be an asset. Number two, it needs to be amortized over its useful life. Similarly, for materiality, 
you would either get it for 45 million or you'd get it for 9 million because she says related to one area i'll only give you one materiality mark oh uns you have to write exactly according to my technique and i can say this with a hundred percent guarantee that you get marks afan i just said i'm not giving you that answer i've, I've said this at least four times huh i'm not giving you that answer at all i have no idea what a safe number of risks is if i don't know whether you're following the format or not Remember, I can't tell you because I don't know. If you're simply writing assets could be overstated, you'd actually be getting a zero because you did not specify it's the intangible assets, which is a problem, right? So if you're following the format, if you're very comfortable with the format, then you could divide the total marks by, I think, two, two and a half, and then go for that number. But I always say, instead of managing according to marks do it according to time so 20 marks multiplied by 1.5 minutes answer as much as you can in the allocated time and then move on to the next part so if i scroll back up i've now covered the second part as well which is the technique that you have to follow for risk of material misstatement there is no technique for detection risk. You can get two marks per well-explained detection risk. If it's a new audit client, if you have to rely on the work of a service organization, if you have to rely on the work of a competent auditor, all of these will lead to um, high detection risk. Sometimes, and she hasn't done this for a very long time, but it's still a part of her syllabus, she would say and this this time around for this question she would give you longer financial statements but the requirements would be you need to evaluate audit risk same as b above but you get additional marks for preliminary analytical procedures so these are basically extra marks if she asks you to perform preliminary analytical procedures now in the AAA exam, the biggest mistake that you guys are doing is doing the calculation and then putting a full stop and thinking I've gotten my marks. So there's a student who's written, sales have gone up by 7%. Cost of sales have gone down by 3%. Any student who stops here gets a zero these are simple calculations and you get absolutely no marks for it until you tell me so what so then you write the risk is revenue could be overstated or cost of sales could be understated now you'll get the calculation mark and you'll get the risk marks as well same case with your ratios so a student is writing last year in Venti holding period was 37 days. This year it's gone up to 72 days. Even if the calculation is correct, you would get a zero. You have to explain the risk is that my, the inventory might not be stated at lower of cost and NRV. And therefore, inventory could be overstated now you'll get your materiality mark you'll get your risk mark and you'd get your overstatement mark as well so although i don't think this will come up again because instead of expecting you to waste time um, in doing these calculations she normally gives you the calculations and says okay tell me the risks in this area so i've uploaded this handout for you to remember because these are the ratios that she would normally expect you to calculate but this is primarily uh, something that used to be done in earlier papers absolutely Amir. 
So obsolescence discussion is what they're looking at. So Amir has asked me another question. If we just mention one material, yeah, absolutely, Amir. So do it for any one area for intangible assets. Then do another one for um, revenue, for example. Another one for uh, property planning equipment. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. So for a license, it could be the cost, it could be amortization. You'd only get one mark in total. But for all other assets, you'd get separate marks. Any questions still here, guys? I'm going to give it a few more minutes to see if you guys have any questions. I'm going to talk about the case study technique, the professional marks, and then we're going to be doing a case study with BR and audit risk as well. Happy for me to continue? All right. Super. So in terms of the case study, I'm going to first tell you how your case study is structured, the sequence in which the information flows, and then I'd tell you a technique that you can apply today. It might or might not work for you, but at least try this today. So starting off with the AAA case study, it has a very predictable sequence of information. On the very first page, it will give you a few paragraphs in which you would be able to identify today's date. So make sure you use your highlighting tool to identify what date it is today. This is very important for IX10 because if you don't know today's date and the year end, then you would not be able to write answers for IX10 related issues. You would have the firm's name, not really important, but don't want you confusing this with the client. Super important are you would have the client's year end, whether this is listed or private, whether it's an individual company or a group, and one line about what it does. Is it a bank? Is it a manufacturing company, et cetera, et cetera. And then it has a list of exhibits. So it will literally say the names exhibit one includes this, two includes this. On the next page, which is normally exhibit one, you would have the requirements. Remember, it could be anywhere between A to F. So sometimes there are only four marks, sometimes five parts, sometimes six parts. There are 46 technical marks, four professional marks that I'm going to cover in just a few minutes from now. And then afterwards, you have about four to five pages of information. It's rarely five pages, it's normally four, but then again, this is something which is more of a trend rather than what the examiner has said. So in the first page, it's very important to underline the key parts so that I don't miss out on my obvious answers. I would recommend that you try and use up to 20 minutes for doing step number one and two. So for step one and two, this is what I want you to do. So the invigilator says you can start your exam right now. Forget section B, read the case study quickly as if you're trying to understand the story in the case study. You're not trying to remember any information, but a quick read through the entire case study to see what has happened. It would start off with the client's background, it will give you some information about events and transactions during the year. It would have some part of financial information extracts, et cetera, et cetera. Then the second time, I want you to read this slowly and this time highlight the risks that you find. Remember, risks are going to be about 25 marks out of 50. So in the second time reading, if you spend a bit of time in highlighting the risk, then that's the best thing to do. After you've read the risks and highlighted them, you can start copy pasting the highlighted portions in your response area and answer each part using the 1.5 minute rule. So in the actual exam, for part A, if it is 10 marks, 
no matter how well I know the answer, I shouldn't spend more than 15 minutes on this one. So the examiner is saying it's important that you spend some time in understanding the risks because if that's clear, the rest of the questions will become much easier for you to attempt as well. So today, I'm going to ask you to time yourself. I hope you haven't done this case study before. If you have, still doesn't matter, do it from the scratch and um, just try and see how much you can do in the first 20 to 25 minutes. One last thing and I'll open up the chat box. If you remember yesterday, I did say, I'll tell you the easiest way to get four out of four and you can potentially get these four marks in the five first 10 minutes of attempting your answer. Your first mark is for writing true from and subject. So based on the requirement, she would tell you who the briefing notes are for, who are they from. So to the engagement partner, from the engagement manager, planning of ABC Co. So literally when the markers see two from subject, they would give you the first mark. Then the next thing should have an introduction. Please don't write long stories. Simply summarize the requirement. These briefing notes contain a, an evaluation of business risk, audit risk, along with ethical issues faced by ABC. Simply writing this would get you your second mark. Throughout the question, particularly for your risks, try and use headings. So for example, and I've done this with you already, you could write license, explain your answer. You could write um, uh, compliance, explain your answer. So when the markers see the headings, you get your third mark. There is absolutely no extra effort needed for the fourth one, as long as you're writing in full English sentences and you are answering the requirement, you would get the fourth mark. If you wrote business risk under wrong, and wrong under BR, then the fourth mark is lost because you weren't very clear on what you were explaining. So clarity of expression is simply, please answer the requirement and write in full English sentences. If you were able to explain your risks properly, you would get the fourth mark easily. So please understand since 2018 September, she has only been testing briefing notes and these are the notes which contain your first mark, your second mark, and your third mark. You should have a conclusion at the end, just a one line conclusion to say, this is a risky client, we need to be careful, and that would be fine. Normally, if you have a proper introduction, you get your second mark anyway. In case a report is tested, it has a similar format, but this hasn't been tested since 2018. She has been testing briefing notes only. I'm going to now open up the question and answer box to see if you guys have any questions regarding the professional marks or the case study reading technique. Amar, they have been uploaded in today's handout section. I think it's under a heading called solved day one let me just have a look yep it's called day one solved merged pdf that's the one from that's going to happen for every single day huh uh, the previous day uh, days annotated handouts will be um, added on the next day Ahmed, no 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 not at all thank you for asking this question introduction is to the briefing notes explaining the contents of the briefing notes so these briefing notes contain these four areas that's it no afan just use precise so for example for business risks for 10 marks i should see only five headings that's it for audit risks if you found six of them i should see six headings 
Oh, absolutely, O'Brien, yes. Absolutely, yes. You will get some or you can get some risks from the background information as well. All right, guys. Before I get you to start the case study, remember we're doing half of the case study today, which is the risk portion, but very important to remember and please, please follow this. Try and do both parts step by step. So read the case study quickly, read it the second time, highlight the business risk only because that would keep you focused on thinking of problems faced by the management. Then read it again and think of the audit risk only. You could try and do it simultaneously. Any student who is practiced from the revision kit should be able to do that. But if you haven't, then you might struggle a bit. Normally, I would recommend doing it step by step. First, look for business risks. Answer that part in the actual exam. Then risks, look for audit risks. Answer that part in the exam. Right now, please do not start giving me the answer straight away. You should start giving me the answer after you read it the second time. If you give it to me after the first time reading, trust me, you'll be giving me the wrong answers. Unless you know what has happened in this case study, the transactions, the events that happened during the year, you would not be able to come up with good answers. You can highlight them, sure, but type them in after you've read this the second time. Keeping all of this in mind, uh, please remember, I won't be able to fit in the case study on the screen, obviously. For now, I'm looking for answers to A and B only. I'm not going to read this with you at all. All I'm saying is, at the moment, I'm looking for answers to 30 marks. I'm going to give you about 20 minutes to start off with. Of course, you can take more time, but I want proper answers so I can mark them while you send them in as well. I'm still here. I'm putting myself on mute. Please download the case study. It is the 1st of July one and start doing it. Remember, it's very important that I highlight the key information when I start reading the case study. I would want all of you to read the case study and come up with the answer, even if you've done it before. Um, I'm, I'm not really sure why. Richard, are the others able to download the question? Were you, are you able to download the uh, uh, handout called PALE? Richard, I'm not sure how I can help. Um, Edmund, the questions from the other participants are only visible to me. All right. Richard, I'm not sure how I can help. You should try and download it again. Maybe that will work. Do the traditional refresh, shutdown, start again of that particular software or file. <coughs> Or Richard, um, you could just ask me to scroll down after you've read it, but I don't think that will work. Okay, so Maneeb is saying open it in a new window and then download it from there. So that might work. I want to see how much you can pick up from these 30 marks. So please do this step by step, huh? First, I want, after the first 25 minutes, I only want answers to BR. Salva, I'm not commenting on any answers for the next 20 minutes. You need to read the case study twice. The second time around, I need the answer to BR only. 
for now in the exam and for now i only want the answer to part a and when you guys are sending in the answers don't just copy paste from the question tell me what the risk is All right, I need someone to tell because I have a different view. I think at the bottom of the screen, RL has asked uh, has asked where the handout section is. Could I, I request one of the audience members to please help because I have a different version because of course I'm the presenter, so I won't be able to explain it. Is it somewhere right at the bottom of the screen? It's right at the bottom, yes. Thank you, Amir. So there are four handouts there, yep. Pale is the one that we're using right now. Please be careful the first time for part A, you're not accountants, you're the management, huh? You're not auditors.
for now, I'm only going to be looking for answers to business risk, huh? Once we've discussed those, then we'll move on to the second part. Okay, I've had answers coming in. Zahu, your answer for the first half is incorrect. Your entire answer is a zero. Yolanda, your entire answer for the first half is a zero. The second half is correct. I'll give you one mark for your second half of the answer. Salva, absolutely wrong. Remember, we're answering part A only, so that's completely wrong. Anyone who is giving me the answer before reading it the second time is potentially getting it wrong. I did say that earlier on as well. It's not been 20 minutes. If you've done this case study before, then sure, send in your answers. If you're reading it for the first time, please listen to me. I've been teaching this paper for over 15 years. I know what I'm talking about. If you start looking for answers in the first time reading, you will potentially get them wrong. Afan, your answer is wrong. I'll tell you why. Up till three years ago, all the answers that I called wrong wrong were, give, were being given marks now they're not so i'll tell you why in a little while but up till now most of the answers are incorrect i've only gotten one correct answer for one mark For the next 20 minutes or so, I will be commenting on your BR answers only. Then I'll debrief business risk for you. Then we'll do the audit risk answers. That's exactly what you should do in your actual exam as well.
Yolanda, I'm reading your answer. Perfect, Yolanda, very well done. That's absolutely correct. So I've gotten one correct answer for the business risk. Just going to put that down in a second. All right. Um, Hamayal, I'm going to read your answer now. Hamayal, you'll have to explain what the problem with it being a foreign and remote country. So the way you've written, it's a zero for now. Very well done, Adil, very well done, that's perfect. Edmund, you'll have to tell me what the problem is in the news report. Sam, very well worded. So regarding the expansion, I have two answers. Um, lack of knowledge of the local laws and regulations and uh, management having problems in overseeing the activities. So it will take up management's time. They'll have to monitor it, monitor it remotely, which could affect decision making as well. Dua, very well done. You don't need to talk about the loans because that's an assumption. Don't speculate but I'm happy to give you marks for liquidity issues because of the fact that um, it's obvious they have uh, a loan uh, related issues. Absolutely, Hamal. So I'm just going to, for now, mark the correct answers that I've received up till now. Just going to scroll up. So my first correct answer has been this one. Laws and regulations are different, plus management would need to monitor. Um, all of this is the correct one. Then the next correct answer that I received, I was very surprised because that was a difficult one, was this one. So again, this is going to lead to cash flow outflow. So cash outflow plus reputational damage as well. And there was another one that I received. I was, hang on, let me just minimize this so I can see the case study properly. Yep, this is indicative of liquidity issues as well. It's one of the problems related to liquidity. So these are the correct answers that I've received up till now. I've had more answers coming in. I'm going to comment on them. Right, hang on. So Shane, uh, that's absolutely correct. Fines and breach penalties from the breach of health and safety guidelines leading to cash flow and liquid um, reputational issues. Maneeb, done, very well done. Not meeting the gold standard requirements leading to reputational issues as well as loss of revenue. That's a very good way to word it. Franklina, very well done. Again, the lawsuit is going to result in cash outflows. Very well done. Super. Remember, you need to look for 10 well-explained risks before you can say, oh, I'm comfortable with this.
come on guys there's lots more so pretend this is your company and this is what's happening at your company you're the owner huh so what are you worried about based on all this information what are you worried about that is your answer to part a no amir not going to give you marks for that at all Hamza, I'm reading your answer. Hamza, very well done. Very well done. Very few people pick this up. If you do not meet the current conditions, you'll have to give it back, leading to, leading to liquidity problems. That's very well worded as well, Hamza. Yolanda, I'm reading your answer. Yolanda, very well done. Very well worded. So lots of indications that the gold standard might not be renewed. And remember, I've just gotten a major customer because of this gold standard as well. So it's the loss of this standard is going to have very serious consequences. um adil i wouldn't hang on let me just read from no so i wouldn't give you marks for reliance on royal because that's not the problem reliance is not the problem because as long as you're doing well there's no indication of any problem reliance is not a big deal you will have to link it to chances that you're going to lose this major client because of what has happened in the scenario Remember, gold standard has certain criteria. Please evaluate whether that is met. And if not, then not only with the standard um, uh, be withdrawn, the gold standard accreditation, you would also lose the major customer as well. Then that becomes your answer. No marks for this Hamza. No marks for exports related problems. Up till three years ago, she was giving these marks. Now I'll tell you why in a little while, but now she doesn't give them anymore unless there's an indication there are problems. So for simply saying exchange rate risk or simply saying um, they are uh, selling goods to overseas customers and therefore they could face problems, she says, don't speculate. I'm not going to give you marks for that. Shane, very well done. Your plans to get your listing could get affected in the future because of the negative reputational impact. Love the linkage. Um, no, Amir, she won't give you marks for dilution of shareholding. She doesn't give marks for things like that. Um, she won't give you marks for assuming that the timber industry is going to be highly regulated. If she's not specified it's highly regulated, then no marks for that. She keeps using the term, do not speculate. So if you feel at any point in time that there was no indication given and I want to write the answer, don't. Because she's saying, unless I tell you this is a regulated industry, don't talk about non-compliance. Sam, I'm reading your answer. No, Sam, I won't give you marks for this. Following standards is going to cost me money is not a valid business risk. Unless you link it to any indication that the requirements of the standard have not been fulfilled. Salva, I'm reading your answer. Salva, very well done. 
for the employees related issue is it's not only just the outflow it's the reputational impact as well so yeah spot on that is absolutely spot on um i'm not sure Adil, very well worded. Storms affecting supply of timber. Franklina, very well done. Not being able to go, uh, meet gold standard requirements is my answer. I missed someone saying, please respond to my answer. I'm not sure whose answer I've missed. Could you please send it again? I just saw, just literally went up very fast. Someone just messaged to say, please reply to my answer. If you could please send your answer again. You copy, paste it and send it again, please. So the last answer I can see is Frank Wiener's and I've commented on that. Yup, Afan, I'll give you that mark as well. Very well done. Edmund, very well done. The bribe is going to lead to a lot of repercussions, which include reputational damage as well. Um, Shane, I think if I'm very honest, I'm not going to give you any way, marks for the way you've worded this. There's a different way of talking about this. I'll discuss this in a minute, but the way you've worded this, I won't give you any marks for this. Shilanda, I'm reading your answer. Yep, spot on, Yolanda. Very well done. I'm going to wait another about four minutes, comment on your answers, and then I'll debrief this for you. Um, I'm slightly surprised that very few of you have commented on this part, just putting a red bracket onto it. So if I could have some risks for this part, and I'm super sad, I'm not surprised. I'm super sad that you've missed out on another very easy part. So these two marks you've missed out on, which were very, very easy. Let's see if you can come up with the answer to this. Um, Mukhtar, I can just see the word under more. Ah, O'Brien, I'm so sorry because I have uh, commented, I think, on your answer earlier on as well. I'm not sure if you missed that. If you could copy paste your question again, then I'll let you know. Adil, no, I just discussed weak corporate governance. Remember? Weak corporate governance linked to business risk. Um, Ubed, if you're listening into the session, could you please advise Maz Khan? He's not able to hear me. So if you could be, if you could please help him with his voice issues. Sam, thank you so much. Very well done. Sam has given me the answer to the damaged timber plantation. I know one other person gave me that answer. Mukhtar, very well done. What does poor corporate governance lead to? Adil, no. Adil, for this paragraph, the fact that you have a small internal audit department who reports to the CFO and they don't have an audit committee is weak corporate governance. Just about an hour ago, we discussed weak corporate governance as a business risk as well. Can you see this? And I actually put a star next to it as well. Ah, okay, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. The um, bracket is next to the internal audit point. Thank you, Homera. So weak corporate governance, I'm very surprised slash sad that you missed out on these two easy parts, guys. You shouldn't have. Christine, very well done. 
So the fact that see all of you who wanted to talk about export issues, please talk about my timber or my uh, products being stuck because of industrial action. So I can't make those sales. I have my inventory, which is just lying there. My trees have been destroyed. There are a lot of problems related to that from the management's perspective. Hamza, very well worded. But remember, I'm not going to be there putting brackets on your question, huh? Edmund, from a business point of view, weak corporate governance leads to weak controls, which means your decision making is affected, which means there could be um, fraud and error in the organization, not in the financial statements, in the organization. This could potentially mean lack of accountability, et cetera, et cetera. Afan, I'm reading your answer. Absolutely, Afan, very well worded. So weak corporate governance is indicative of weak internal control, which could, which could increase the chances of fraud and error within the organization. This could lead to poor decision-making, poor monitoring, lack of accountability. You could just use these words interchangeably. Another minute, and then I'm going to minimize the question and answer box and debrief only part A. In the exam as well, I would recommend that you do it step by step so that you don't get confused. No problem, Edmund. Just another minute, if anyone else is sending in their answer, and then I'll tell you how you need to be picking up points and explaining them. You could easily be getting two out of two for a business risk as long as you've explained the problem in a couple of sentences. You don't need to write paragraphs to get those two marks. Right, guys, then what I'm going to do is I've annotated, um, I'm going to minimize, I have minimized the question and answer box. I've annotated this case study with the business risk first. So I read this the first time around. I knew for part A, I had to look for business risk for 10 marks. And I knew I was looking for five well-explained risks. My first business risk is related to weak corporate governance. Remember, you'll only get two marks if you explain the problems the uh, weak controls could cause. So lack of accountability, lack of monitoring, higher chances of fraud and errors being undetected in the organization, et cetera, et cetera. Kept scrolling to the entire um, first page. Very surprised to note that some of you missed this out. The fact that you are going for acquisition in a remote country with new types of timber leads to a number of potential problems. The laws and regulations are going to be different. It's going to take up a lot of management time. This could be a resource drain if it's not managed properly and the types of trees are different. So because of my lack of understanding, I could potentially be investing into a venture which is not very profitable. So with regards to Farland, you need, you can think you need to think about what can go wrong. With regards to the third point, remember it's at the limit of its bank borrowing. They are getting a grant which is going to be used for the Farland expansion and some money is going to be used from the share issue as well. I could talk about the fact that because it's reached its bank borrowing um, limit, then this could potentially be causing solvency issues in the future. If the, grant, if the grant doesn't come through, if the share issue doesn't work properly, then this could lead to money issues for the far land expansion as well. You should have spoken in detail about the gold standard. Please remember, this is going to be renewed if they follow ethical business practices. You need to create the link. This is why I kept saying 
please read the case study once and then find the problems in the second go. They are not ethical because of the legal issues related to the staff because of the incentive payment. If this gold standard is not renewed, not only will their reputation be affected, their contract with Royal is also going to be affected. I saw some of you writing fines related to the gold standard. Unfortunately, that is a zero. It is not a law that is for followed. It's basically a recognition accreditation that you are given. If you don't fulfill the requirement, it will be taken back. There will be no fines. So please don't automatically write fines unless you're very sure it's a law that could be breached. Then regarding the legal case, there were lots of potential impacts the reputation, the cash outflow, the fact that there's a lot of burden on these employees is also indicative of poor governance as well. Um, very few people were able to answer or identify risk number six. Please remember my forests have been damaged and they have had substantial damage. Trees do not grow overnight. These are going to take years to replace. This is going to cause liquidity problems as well. So the linkage is very, very important. Um, if any of you were able to pick up that the gold accreditation or standard has certain requirements and their percentage of timber harvested in line with the standard is going down, this could affect renewal as well. So that's an answer you could link to your earlier one. Because of the industrial action, your sales would be lost, orders would be cancelled, you would be facing high storage costs. She gave marks for talking about impact of inflationary pressures as well. In terms of overall liquidity, I would want you to combine this with the earlier point regarding the bank borrowing. Remember, cash is going down inventory is increasing your export sales are restricted because of industrial action all of these combined are going to cause you liquidity problems in the coming months and then and this is number nine you could talk about the bribe which is going to affect the gold standard it is going to affect my reputation and if i need to handle this to a lawyer this could lead to legal costs as well. Now I'm going to come to the reason why you were not getting your marks for imports. And this is something very, very important. Your examiner is saying, just because I've written that they export a certain something and they've been doing it for a very long time, please do not make up risks. Unless I tell you this is the first year they exported timber, then sure, talk about all the stories you were writing, the currency issues, the operational delays, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. However, if they've been doing this for some time, I will only give you the marks if you link it to the scenario. So, regarding the export, the industrial action is the only relevant linkage that you would get marks for. Similarly, for audit risk, sometimes you would say it's a big group, complicated consolidation. Oh my God, audit risk goes up. And the examiner is saying, no, there is no indication that they're doing this consolidation for the first time. Don't just assume they don't know how to do consolidation. So please try and use this scenario rather than speculating and thinking maybe that's what it actually means. I'm going to open up the chat box, uh, the question and answer box, and see if you guys have any questions regarding BR. I'm only talking about business risk. So I've just had one answer. Franklina, I'm happy to give you your marks. Very well worded. So I will send you this annotated part as well. You'll have it in your handout section by tomorrow. 
but if I could have any questions that you may have regarding business risk. If you try and do A and B simultaneously, trust me, you're going to end up messing both. And we don't want that. Okay, guys, I'm going to give you another five to 10 minutes. You've read the case study once. I'm happy for you to uh, send in your answers right away. Start giving me the answer to part two now. You have to tell me the answer to part two. Mars, we spoke about the business risk format at the start of the session. When you listen to the recording, you'll know how to write the answer. So I told you at the start of the session how to get the two marks, okay? Identify and then explain. Oh, yeah, yeah, Salva, that's absolutely correct. If um, the person, the grant answer is absolutely correct. So if the grant gets taken back, then I'm going to have to, um, uh, my expansion will suffer. That's fine. Um, Godfrey, you can use Pestel, but I feel that's the more difficult approach that might affect your time management. So if you try and look for political factors, try and look for environmental factors, then you might not actually come up with the right answer. So I would say normally go paragraph wise rather than go pestle analysis wise. Because she wants answers specific to the scenario. I'm happy for you to start sending in your answers. Otherwise, please take five, 10 minutes and send me the answer to um, audit risk. Hamail, very well done. Very well worded. I hope all of you found the easy two out of 20 marks, which was first time audit with no experience of timber company. So that is absolutely perfectly worded. I want, I want you to please also tell me which risks would have the materiality marks as well. Even if you're not doing the materiality calculation, it's absolutely fine. But at least tell me that I do the materiality calculation for this one. Do I'm reading your answer now? Done. Done, Dua. So we might not be able to detect material fraud or error because this is my first client. Done, Yolanda. Spot on. New client, lack of experience, lack of understanding of the client, and therefore high DR. So if I just look over here. I'm just going to share this and you've correctly identified high detection risk because of the new client. So yep, yeah, perfect. Adil done. Um, Adil, this increases detection risk, not ROM. This does not include uh, increased risk of material misstatement, okay? DR. Hamail, very well done. Very well done. Good answer. Good answer, Hamail. Hamail, there are lots of other indications of manipulation but one of them is the fact that they want to get um, listed. No, nope. absolutely no marks for translation risk. Unless she has specified, this is something new that happened during the year. Edmund, very well done. Please remember to get two marks for a new audit client, you need to talk about lack of understanding plus opening balances as well. 
So very well worded. Yolanda agreed, perfect. So Chantal, very well done. So I've had all correct answers regarding what you can see on the screen right now, which was high detection risk because of lack of understanding of client. Plus there is a risk that your op opening balances could be under overstated. Um, hang on. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's fine. Afan, I'm reading your answer now. Shane, perfect. Perfect. Chances of manipulation because they're looking to get listed. That's very well worded. Afan, very good wording. You've given me the perfect four and a half mark, uh, three and a half mark answer, Afan. Perfect three and a half mark answer. Guys, could you also please give me the wrong related to weak corporate governance? Weak corporate governance has a risk of material misstatement as well. The DR with opening balances and ROM in internal audit. Uh, sorry, um, sorry, uh, wrong related to corporate governance are the easiest four marks that you could be getting. All right, Mukhtar, so what? You have to tell me a specific financial statement impact or a discussion when you talk about risk of material misstatement. Yolanda, I'm reading your answer now. Done. Hamail, reading your answer. Yep, that's perfect, Hamail. Just add expenses understated as well so that you'd get another half a mark for that. Very well done, Edmund. So weak internal control means control risk is high and therefore chances of fraud and error in the financial statements. Edmund, very well worded as well. So overall, there could be problems, fraud and error in the financial statements. Amir, I'm reading your answer. Yep, Amir, love the use of the word control risk and controls are weak, but I need to see the word fraud, error in financial statements. Why can't I recognize half of the grant? You're on the right track, but I need to know um, the under overstatement. Zahur, no marks for what you've written. Yeah, Yolanda, your answer is correct. Yeah, I did, I've read it, it's absolutely perfect.
So I've gotten one answer for DR and opening balances, one answer for control risk related to weak corporate governance. I've had no right answer regarding grant. I've had the correct answer regarding the legal case. I've had no answers related to the fair value of timbers, inventory. So I'm missing out on quite a few correct answer, guys. Maneev, I'm reading your answer. Yep, manipulation is perfectly spot on, Maneev. Doha, I'm reading your answer. Um, Dua, the last statement of, of disclosure would not result in an overstatement of profit. Please remember, it is the lack of the double entry of a provision which will lead to this. Remember, disclosure is not a double entry. So don't write lack of disclosure would lead to this. Afan, I will give you your marks as long as you include the word control risk in your answer. I need to see the word control risk. Nope, no marks for the share issue, Hamza. Share issue is not something um, that she will give marks for unless she has specified that there's a problem in the way this was reported. Adil, could you please send it again? I'll have a look again. Amir, I'm reading your answer. Amir, this is not a, an audit risk. Loss of gold standard cannot be linked to an audit risk the way you've done so, okay? Um, Adil, there's a problem in the way you've answered this. If it's probable, then it's not a disclosure, it's a double entry of a provision. So no, I won't give you marks for your answer because you've gotten your accounting wrong, right? It's If it's probable, then it's a debit expense credit provision. If it's possible, then it's a contingent liability disclosure. Um, guys, when was the recording for yesterday uploaded? Was it done yesterday or was it done today? Uh, Tala has asked me when the recording is going to be uploaded. I am slightly unclear on that. Very well done, Zahoot. Very well done. Thank God someone has given me IS20 answer. So Zahoot, spot on regarding your answer. Edmund, I'm reading your answer. Agreed. Biasness, perfect. Salva, very well done. Thank you. I was wondering why you gave me the inventory valuation point. IS2, overstatement of inventory, obsolescence. Very well done, Salva. Edmund, perfect. Manipulation because of potential listing. Hamail, I'm assuming you're talking about um, provision, so that's right. Um, 
Mukhtar, you need to uh, talk to me about why are you concerned about going concerned uncertainty. So I won't give you marks until you give me a combination of indicators. Yolanda, I'm reading your answer. Very well done, Yolanda. Perfect wording. Shane, very well done. Perfect wording. Hermione, spot on. So I've been told um, by the ACCA team that recordings will be available today. Once the session ends, then recordings will be available today. <clears throat> I'm going to wait another for you. Ahmed, they've already been uploaded in today's handout section. It says solve day one merged document. All right, I've had another answer. Afan, I'm reading your answer. Amail, your answer regarding the grant is correct. Very well done, um, Afan. Repayment, if the grant conditions are not met, is spot on. See, I can tell that some of you have done your revision kit. You've either done this case study before or you've done your revision kit because you're giving me answers which are repetitive and frequently tested. Dua, I'm reading your answer. Very well done, Dua. Perfect answer. Shane, very well done. I didn't think anyone would be picking up that answer, but good, good answer. I'll cover this in my debrief as well. Frank Lina, good wording. The provision for the lawsuit is, I think, three times that of the profit. So huge issue there. Um, Maz, I'm okay to give you marks for overstating income. I'm not sure why you're talking about understated expenses. Remember, you'll have to defer it. So overstating income is fine, but it's the liability which is understated. Yeah. Absolutely deferred liability. Absolutely. All right, guys. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to minimize my answer box, um, question and answer box for a minute. And not a minute, more than a minute. And I'm going to debrief the um, audit risk for you. So as a student, if you could please, I think I've had something else that's come through. If you could, if I could please request you to um, listen to the debrief first. And Yolanda, I'm just going to quickly read your answer first. Yolanda, perfect wording. Perfect wording regarding IS 37. Okay, so you'll only get two out of two for your um, new client if you cover lack of knowledge leading to high detection risk plus opening balances being misstated. In this question, you could also get two in total if you talk about lack of industry experience as well. So remember, you have to talk about lack of understanding of client Otherwise, you won't get the first mark and then you'll have to mention opening balances being under or overstated. Otherwise, you won't get the second mark. So this is normally a two mark answer as long as both aspects are covered. So out of 20, two marks for talking about this one. 
Control risk is always two marks as well. Please make sure you remember in terms of risk of material misstatement, you have to talk about chances of under overstatement because of this corporate governance weakness. This is indicating a weak control environment. Control risk is going to go up. Remember, ROM includes inherent risk and control risk. So we're talking about high control risk in this scenario, leading to a higher chance of fraud or error in the financial statements. So business risk is fraud and error in the company. ROM is fraud and error in the financial statements, which are made at the end of the year. So four out of 20, I can comfortably get in the first two, three minutes of writing down the answer because I've done my revision kit and I know these are the answers that I can easily write every single time. Then comes my actual accounting part. Now, in terms of the format that we spoke about, you have marks for commenting on materiality of 20 million. You get marks for saying, uh, talk about IS20, that you have to defer it and release it to the PNL in line when the expenses are occurred, incurred. Sorry, the risk is it is not deferred and therefore liability is understated, profit is overstated. If you read your standard answers in the revision kit, you will see that she always talks about repayment. If you're not using it specifically for the purpose that it was given, you will have to repay it, which could lead to me needing to recognizing a provision as well. Please look at the fact that the, they have recognized half of the grant. So if I go to the profit figure, the current profit before tax figure, you'll have to identify the fact that if they recognize half of the grant, it from 6.5, it will go up to 16.5. This is another example of manipulation. They are planning on recognizing this half of this amount. And if they do so, this would probably be, they would probably be doing it because they want to manipulate the financial statements. There is no risk of material misstatement related to gold standard. If you've made it, then that's the wrong answer. For the legal case, easy one mark for your materiality. Please make sure you explain IS 37 properly. I see some of you are messing it up in a hurry. Present obligation, past event, probable outflow, expense can be measured is a provision. Possible outflow is a contingent liability disclosure. Risk is one of these has not been done. Once again, this is three times the amount of PBT. So if this expense needs to be booked, it's going to be material by nature as well. The 70.5 million gets a star because no one was able to give me the right answer. Not even a single student was able to give me this answer. The reduction in the fair value is material to the to total assets. It's super pervasive to PBT because it would convert a profit into a loss. The risk is that they might not recognize all of the 70.5 million. The risk is that the expert who did the calculation might not be competent or independent. There is the risk that other assets could be impaired because of the storm and they have not done an impairment review. So yes, the storm affected the timber plantation, but I see no indication that an impairment review was done on the other assets like buildings as well. So I'm very surprised that you were not able to remember fair value is an accounting estimate that in itself carries a lot of problems. It's judgmental, it's susceptible to biasness, and therefore, this is a very risky area. And in any case, the amount is huge as well. Again, your inventory had a materiality mark. 
talking about valuation at the lower of cost and NRV and the risk that these inventory might be obsolete and therefore overstated. Then when I go towards the end, this is why guys, I kept saying, please read the case study two times before you start giving me the answers. Overall, I am concerned that a going concern uncertainty disclosure might be needed. Why? Because going concern is never one factor. It's a combination of indicators. Timber has been destroyed. There's been industrial action. My reputation has been affected. There's no cash. Fair value has affected the PVT. So combined, the risk that a fair, so a going concern, uncertainty disclosure might be inadequate or missing. Overall, regarding manipulation, they will need to give a dividend payment. They're looking to get listed. They have international expansion. Profit before tax has gone up significantly and Mark's accounting treatments are quite dodgy. The fact that he wants to include the grant, et cetera, combined, this is indicative of manipulation. So she would give you about two marks for this and two marks for manipulation as well. I'm going to open up the chat box, guys. If you have any questions at all, please ask away. Okay, I've had questions coming in. I'm gonna have to scroll back up bit. Salva, I'm reading your answer because I think I missed your answer. Okay, Salva, um, I give you that marks that the evaluate the recording of the loss has been not been done completely. Amir, Amir, at the risk risk stage, we only talk about the fact that he might not be independent or competent. Then at the procedure stage, we will have to evaluate his independence and competence. So at this stage, I'm only writing, maybe this person did not do the valuation correctly. Zuhur in the actual exam, for scenario based, there is no prioritizing that is needed. All the risks that are material are automatically prioritized. As far as, yes, Tawa, that's what we're going to do after this one. That's what exactly what we're going to do. And then you're going to come back and do another part of this case study for me. So entire focus is our case study and you are going to be able to do another one. No, not at all uns. No marks for that answer. All right, guys, we're going to take a five minute break. And then when you come back, we're going to do another, you are going to do another part of this case study for me. And um, then that would really be it. Yep, overall marks, two marks. Two marks for overall, um, talking about manipulation. Afan, I don't think you should replicate the revision kit wording. That would be slightly difficult. But yes, the stages should be the same. So now when you go back and read the revision kit answers, you would see the steps are the same. Materiality, accounting treatment, risk, and under overstatement. But I think the revision kit answers us slightly longer. So I won't want you to do exactly that. No, that's tomorrow, Amir. That's the agenda, that's on the agenda for tomorrow. Guys, I have another question before we go on a break. Um, Abed, if you could please help us. Um, how are the recordings going to be available? Yep, Maz. Yep, that's it. So in this question, manipulation um, indications are there. So they're recording something else in order to hide the actual situation.
Oh, they're on HCC Pakistan YouTube. Is that where the recordings are? I had no idea. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys, five minute break. And then we resume with one more part of the case study. And then we'll be done for the day. Five minutes, huh?
All right, guys, and we're back. Um, if I could please now request you to attempt part D for me. I'm going to share my screen again this time around, and I'm not helping you at all. I want you to read this requirement very carefully. If you don't read the requirement carefully, you're going to waste time looking for information in exhibits one, two, three, and four. A lot of you will mess this up in the actual exam. Please do this very carefully. So she said, using this exhibit, answer this requirement for 10 marks. So take about five to seven minutes and please come up with the answer to this. Let's see what you guys can come up with. So remember when she uses the word ethical issues, she's giving you a hint that there are problems from the code of ethics as well. So explain the ethical issues and other audit planning implications which arise in relation to the phone call from the CFO Mark. So whatever he said in exhibit five, how is that going to affect my audit planning and what are the ethical issues? I'm just going to scroll all the way down to exhibit five and then waiting for your 10 mark answer, guys. After we finish this debrief, I'll talk about um, the changes in your ISA 315 through the technical article. So, Zuhur, I'll talk about prioritizing risk theoretically, but as far as the um, risk scenario base is concerned, there's no difference. So, don't worry too much about um, prioritizing risk in the scenario based context. That automatically is done when you talk about material risks only. So you prioritize when you talk about material risks. Please do not read this in a hurry. You'll have to look for different problems and discuss different aspects to this. Okay, I've had some answers that, that have come through. Very well done, Doa, perfect. So self-interest related to linking audit fee. And what does the code say about this, Doa? Can you do that for audit? So you get another mark. So you get one mark for self-interest and another mark for telling me whether that can be done for audit or not. 
for audit of financial statements. Yeah, though for audit, it is not allowed. Amit, contingent fee for audit is not allowed. For non-assurance and other assurance services, it's allowed, but you shouldn't really do it. Remember, it is mainly for external audit that it is strictly, strictly prohibited. Please do not misunderstand the code. For audit, it's a strict no. For other services, it's not recommended, but you can still go ahead and do it. Okay, Abdullah, I'm reading your answer. Very well done, Abdullah, good wording. Um, I'll give you, Yolanda, I'll give you one mark for self, one mark for self-interest for the fee and one mark for saying this is a separate engagement, so would require a separate engagement letter. Use the word separate engagement letter. So you'll get two marks over the way you've written this. Very well done. Um, there's no fee dependence, Afan, but yes, there is self-interest. Linking fee to favorable results is definitely self-interest, but there's no fee dependence. Do not use the word fee dependence, please. And you're absolutely correct. Audit fee cannot be on a contingent basis. So separate marks for saying audit fee cannot be on a contingent basis. So I've forgotten a one, okay, I'll just summarize. One mark for saying self-interest due to the fee related to the additional assignment. One mark for self-interest related to contingent fee. One mark for saying it's not allowed. Um, the contingent fee is not allowed for audit. I think, and one mark for saying you cannot tell the auditor uh, what to do. That's intimidation and that really is not pos um, um, allowed or permitted. Yes, Abdullah, for sure. One mark for saying this, this concern about the management's integrity. Salva, very well done. Self-review. Salva is the only one who's picked up self. Oh no, Dua has as well. So please make sure, guys, you explain self-review, otherwise you get no marks. You'll have to tell me, by the way, how do these KPIs come under self-review? When will I audit them? I audit financial statements. So how come there's self-review over here? March done, your answer is correct. They're not providing an opinion, Mars. They're doing it as a separate engagement. Ahmed, very well done. You get one mark for saying this is going to be other information in the document containing audited financial statements, and therefore it would lead to self review. That's a separate mark. But, Jolanda, you'll have to tell me how this is self review. So where in the financial statements do we see this other information? We don't see it in the other information, but as a part of my responsibility, I will review this for consistency with financial statements. Remember, there's a topic, other information in the financial state, uh, sorry, in the report containing audited financial statements. Remember, self-review happens if there's something that you checked and then you're doing it again. 
So you'll have to explain what the link to external audit is. Anything else, guys? Um, this, okay, I'm going to give you a hint. Any linkage to the regulatory environment? You have linked it to ethics. You have linked it to management's integrity. But is there any indication that you can do to section A of the syllabus? I'm giving you a hint over here, guys. Let's see if you can come up with the answer. You can for sure consider, don't consider it, Abdullah, but mention that you can't tell me what to do because it's a precondition that I have unlimited access to everything. Amir, um, the, what's happening in the bottom paragraph can be linked to the regulatory environment, which is what we did yesterday, part A of the syllabus. So if you could think of that linkage, maybe. Going to wait another two, three minutes and then. Uh, no, Salva, she won't give you those marks. No, there's no line marks. The entire paragraph, the one in green, which says audit implication. Okay, I'm giving you another hint. Is bribery legal? Is bribery legal? And if it's not, then which topic can you link this to? Laws and regulations, guys. Laws and regulations. Absolutely. So, Ahmed, you need to consider laws and regulations. You need to consider reporting this to external authorities as well. Right, guys, I want you to stop typing for a second and please have a look at my screen where I'm going to cover each element one by one. Absolutely, Yolanda. So indicative of poor integrity on marks and as well. So my first mark for saying auditor KPI is other information in the audit report which the auditor has to review for material inconsistencies. Because of this, says there's a self-review threat. She said, I will also give you marks if you talk about advocacy and self-interest related to fee as well. You get one mark for saying that the code does allow you to give assurance on KPIs as long as safeguards can be implemented. One mark for saying separate team, another mark for saying engagement quality control review, which is an independent partner review. One of you said this, you have to understand this is a separate assurance engagement with a separate engagement letter and the fee has to be separate as well. For audit, you cannot have a contingent fee for other assurance work. It is allowed, but it is preferred if it is not done so. When you look at my code from yesterday, it is clearly mentioned over there. You get easy marks for saying before accepting this work, consider if you have the competence and the resources then I'm changing the course of my answer. Remember, incentive payment is potentially illegal. As an auditor, it is my responsibility to understand the laws and regulations, and therefore I will need to perform procedures to confirm this breach. I'll have to report this to the those charged with governance, 
I need to consider external reporting and I am extremely concerned about the integrity of the management. None of you picked up the fact that we did this yesterday. If you look over here, this is my standard answer format for laws and regulations. You talk about the responsibilities, you talk about the procedures, you talk about reporting. Any questions regarding this? Remember I told you section A, B and C as part of trend analysis is there in question number one. Sometimes you could have an entire 25 mark question in section B as well on section A, B and C. So this was a surprise test of laws and regulations in this case study. By the way, um, yes, you are Dua. You are going to get this. I will keep nothing for myself. A reporting, Amit, this is reporting. I will, uh, those charged with governance is a term for the audit committee or the entire board. So I will tell them that an illegal uh, matter has occurred. It's the CFO who is leading all of this. I need to make sure I go sort of tell on him to, the, to those charged with governance as well. Remember our reporting from yesterday, Amit? It doesn't matter, even if it's a $1 a bribe, it's illegal. So if you get caught doing something wrong, you can't argue over materiality, Amit. You can't say, I'm only smuggling drugs for $10, so please don't put me to jail, right? A breach is a breach regardless of the amount. Um, Obed, could you please help Afan um, and direct him towards the recordings availability? All right, guys, so that sort of wraps up. Um, no, 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 there's no specific answer format, Mars. Mars, when I was reading the question, I was picking up hints regarding the topics I could lick my answer to. So the code of ethics and then that. And remember, the code has a format. So we discussed this yesterday. Code has a format. Talk about the threats, explain them, tell me what the code says about it, and then tell me what I have to do right now. And from yesterday, laws and regulations also has a format which is what we followed today as well. Right, guys, like I said earlier, don't worry about this. I'm going to be sending in the annotated answer files to you guys at the end of the session. It also has the answer to procedures that we're not doing today because that's um, sort of focus for tomorrow, but I won't be doing this question. I'll be doing five other questions tomorrow. So I've shortlisted five very interesting questions for you for tomorrow, and we'll be doing all five during the session. The last thing that I want to do today is talk about the technical article. So like I said, this is not a current issue. This is a revision to an auditing standard. Now, one of you has been, I don't know, I think it was Zuhura Saman, has been talking about um, confusion. Okay, Maz, yes, in today's section, handout section, there's a file called answer file day one aggregated that's the one from yesterday right guys so um yeah so you've been concerned about uh what or how the technical article needs to be applied what i've done is so i did this for my uh, students at scans i've uploaded this for you guys as well i'll tell you which part needs to be learned in case it comes up as scenario based, sorry, straightforward discussion. Okay. So you, I've, my chat box is now minimized. So I can't see anything that you're sending in right now. Okay. I'll have a look at it once I finish talking about this. So you start off by reading the background information to this. Very simple terms. Nothing needs to be learned at all. 
Remember, my equation for audit risk has not changed at all. Audit risk is a product of risk of material misstatement along with detection risk. Risk of material misstatement includes inherent and control risk. I'm going to highlight the changes, guys. So this is how I want you to learn this. In order to evaluate inherent risk as an auditor, I have to gain an understanding about the entity and the financial reporting framework. So as auditors, I can make a list of inherent risk through A and B on the screen right now. While I'm understanding the entity, the new terms are important. So the revised ISA talks about risk factors. So areas which have complexity, judgment, where there has been a change, where there is uncertainty and there is risk of management bias, these areas automatically affect inherently inherent risk. So in SOFP and PNL items, you're going to look for these factors in each account balance and class of transaction. I've explained this with examples to you over here. So I, when you're reading this, I've given an example of areas which are complex. I've given an example of areas which include subjectivity. I've given an example of change and uncertainty and chances of fraud and error, manipulation. So the first new element, and she could simply ask you to explain this is, what are the five factors which will help the auditors in assessing inherent risk? So first element that I want you to learn for simple explanation, nothing fancy at all. So step number one, list down the inherent factors and areas which are affected by these factors. Once you've done that, the next step is you have to assess the likelihood and magnitude of each risk. So the chances that the misstatement will ha happen and how material it would be. So when I say spectrum of risk, I want to see if the risks are significant. So significant risk is a new term as per your ISA. And again, you need to consider the likelihood and magnitude. Once again, I've given examples. I'm so sorry. I don't know what, what happened. Hi, here you go. So I've given some examples. So for example, cash at a supermarket, there could be a high likelihood of fraud. But magnitude depends on whether people use card or credit uh, or cash. If they don't use cash at all, although there's a high chance of cash being stolen, the magnitude would only be $20, $30 because people don't have the hobby, habit of paying in cash. So I've written some examples for you. So if I just first come up with what you need to learn, when I'm talking about inherent risk, I'm, I'm going to try and get you to learn this right now. huh? When I'm talking about inherent risk, I have to understand the entity. As a part of this understanding, I should know which five factors affect risk. Then I should know how I can actually identify significant risks and what this actually means. So simply learn the meaning of significant risk. And then I'm almost done. Based on all of this analysis, the last thing you have to do is, I'm going to highlight this, prioritize risks and decide next steps. So for risk where the likelihood and magnitude both are high, this is top priority. So in terms of next steps, I will need more evidence I will make sure the quality of evidence is better. I will check internal controls over this area. I will make sure I tell those charged with governance about them, maybe include them in key audit matter paragraph. And 
the partner should look at these areas in detail. So the poor standard people have done nothing. We've always been doing this. They've just given significant new terms to this area. So prioritize significant risks and plan next steps. So if she wants to ask you a discussion based question, it would be one of these threes, three points. What are the factors for five marks? What do you mean by significance? Two, three, four marks. Once significant risks are listed down, how do you, what do you do next? So you prioritize them and do all those things that I've spoken about. Inherent risk can also be found by understanding the financial reporting framework. And once again, there's nothing new over here. You have to look at accounting policies, the reporting framework, industry specific regulations, and make sure new elements like cryptocurrencies are something that your team or so the client is comfortable with. When we talk about control risk, it has to be assessed separate from IR, and you will need to understand the components of internal controls to see if the control risk is high or not. The new part is, remember the five components, they've divided this into two steps. Control environment, risk assessment, and monitoring is now called indirect controls. Information system and control activities is called direct controls. That's it. That is the only change that has happened to three, ISA 315. It's not at all difficult if you sit down for about 10 minutes at the most and go through this handout step by step, you should be easily able to understand what the ch uh, changes are. I don't think she's going to test this as a discussion-based topic, but if she's in a good mood, she just might do it. So when someone was asking, how do you prioritize risk? You're basically making sure in your answer, only give me significant risks, which are material. Don't talk to me about amounts which are not material by amount or nature. Mars, it might come in as a theoretical question or a discursive question. So she might ask you to explain um, how inherent risk is evaluated as per the revised ISA 315. I have nothing else planned for the day, guys. If you have any questions at all, please ask away. Yep, that's the latest one, Mars. The earlier ones have been tested. You should keep monitoring it. It's only the 3rd of November. You should check a day before your exam as well if a new one has come, but I doubt it. Just going to put this up for you guys. Um, as per the plan, tomorrow we're going to be covering audit evidence and procedures. I'll talk about common requirements, answering techniques, and I have two short, sorry, five short questions that I'm going to do with you of different categories. Some have matters, some have evaluation of evidence, so all are different categories. Any questions, guys? I have no idea, Afan. How many marks discursive questions can be asked? There is no trend. Honestly, there is no trend because I don't know about all the papers. Some of the papers are not published. I could give you a figure, but what if in the unpublished papers, she's tested it for more marks? I wouldn't know. And then you come back to me and say, Pap, you said it would only come for eight marks. It came for 12 marks. So I'm restricting my professional liability. Okay. <laughs> not that I want you to sue me, but I'm just saying I, I honestly don't know. On an average, I would say about six to eight marks. No problem. Okay, number one, we don't have a WhatsApp group. Number two, um, the recordings 
are going to be available i have no idea when i'm so sorry i don't actually obey if you could please help with the recordings when and where i don't have the answer to that um maz you can see see obviously we can't practice every single thing in terms of other assignments i will only cover a few other assignments so i have I, i'm going to do a question on due diligence and maybe one on pfi as well and there'll be no recap of other assignments because there there are too many or what we can do is on day 4 no on tomorrow tomorrow i get you guys to vote i'll put up um uh, names of three four other assignments and i'll ask you to pick up two so that we can focus on those in the webinar so we'll do a, i i think we can create a poll maybe sometime i think they might i don't know how to do that <laughs> but i'll get you guys to choose all right then guys i have nothing else to um say so you can you're free to leave now thank you so much and i hope you're more comfortable with your technique whichever revision kit you're using at the end they have three marks even if you've done that case study time yourself and try and attempt the three marks please dua has sent me a question no dua i have not heard any such thing thank you so much noor activity or something three marks which three marks are you talking about um mars three marks no 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 all right dua thank you <laughs> thank you salva by the way you are writing very well i have no idea what three marks for activity you are talking about ma so i know i i don't remember four professional marks in question number 1 oh three mocks mocks m o c k mock exams the three mock exams at the end <laughs> so there are normally three mock exams at the end Hi right, guys, Waalaikum Assalam. Thank you. Hi right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Stay safe, everyone. It's a goodbye from my end. Yes, I'm here. Go on. Unfortunately, uh, Baba says say I can't. That would be a huge breach of copyright. So I can't. I'm so sorry. Amir, have I missed a question from you? Alafe Salva. Thank you, Yolanda. Great answers, by the way. Amit, they're available for scanned students. Yes, no, it's not available online. Um, Amit, there's we offer a product called I've forgotten what it was, where you'll be given access to the platform and some questions in it, and you can practice it. You should have access to ACCS practice platform. You can actually practice your answers in that. so as students you would have access to that just use that yep i think something like that all right guys thank you so much i'll see you tomorrow then thank you goodbye everyone